The works now on BBC Two goes on tour with Ronnie Size and Represent, a musical collective from Bristol. The film contains strobe lighting effects. <laughs> has got potential to be the music of the future. The Americans have got their head pop at now, and I think this is like, this is England's thing, drum and bass. All right, now we're getting into this sound. Pick it up, shake it up, turn it upside down. Introducing to you, this year's Top Boys, this year's Mercury winners, producers of that bad album, New Forms, and newly released single, Brown Paper Bag, Ronnie Sides and the Represent Crew. So Ronnie Sides and the Bristol-based Represent Collective have won the 1997 Mercury Music Prize. This is probably the most radical winner in the history of the prize. Drum and bass is still very much an underground movement in Britain, but tonight it really goes overground as New Forms wins Album of the Year. You know, people said we were crazy, but we just believed in what we were doing. You know, die, sub, dynamite, you know, crust. We've all, you know, been working hard for this, and this isn't, you know, just about me. This is about, you know, this is... <laughs> By the time we came to the judges meeting, that was a record that most of us didn't take off our turntable. The most interesting creative music that's happening in Britain is happening around about the dance club scene. So I think for New Forms, one of its great achievements was to very much somehow shape and make us feel this is what music is now about in Britain in 1997. There's a, a whole lot of people out there who have not heard of this music. And when they hear it, it'll be something new and different. And the whole album is a reflection of an era which influenced me where there was this whole influx of music from America, music from Jamaica, music from Europe, you know, hip-hop, reggae, all these different musics were coming into England, like flooding into England. <laughs> Da 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 da. 
sometimes people hear the name drum and bass and they immediately switch off. That shouldn't be the case, man. They shouldn't let the names overshadow the music. We're not mad, man. We're not mad scientists trying to create some crazy thing, man. We're, you know, we're, 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 you know, we're future musicians, man. We're pioneers of a new music, man. That's what this music is. is about trying to look into the future. Drum and bass is, is totally different. You know, it's a whole different world. It's, it's like when I talk about jazz music, and the, the ultimate is the imagination in jazz, it's the same thing for drum and bass. You've arrived at a very interesting point, if you want, in the late 20th century, in the sense that the music we call popular music is really, it actually kind of touches on the avant-garde. Each time someone like Ronnie Sires wins something like the Mercury Music Prize, you shift and broaden the parameters of what is popular music. You know, and you begin to realise, really, the music that is popular can be about so many more things than a verse, a chorus, a hook, a bass line. There is a new generation of people who've grown up through rave culture to whom that was their punk music, who do hear music in a different way, who've grown up through hearing music in clubs, loud, dancing, going to raves, driving around the M25, you know, looking for searchlights in the sky. That is their Friday and Saturday night. So I do think for a real appreciation of what's going on, you have to get into that frame of mind. Um, you've got to stop saying it doesn't sound like the Beatles, you know. <laughs> um, it just sounds different, you know. I think one of the main things that we have done in Bristol is not copied anybody. Everyone, I think, has got that same attitude. They want to pioneer a new sound. They want to do something that no one else has done before. A lot of people, a lot of influential people have come out of Bristol. I don't know what they're eating for breakfast, but I want some. <laughs> Bristol plays a really important part in British music in the 90s, really, in terms of artists like Ronnie Size, in terms of artists like Tricky, Massive Attack, Portishead, all of these people who've come out of this quite small city. It's not about the massive attacks or the Portisheads or the Trickies or the Ronnie Sizes. It's more about, um, you know, the people that go out and they create that vibe. This is definitely the busiest part of town, like Park Street, the Watershed, and, um, you know, clubs like the Fekka. Uh, all the surrounding clubs, these definitely get packed every single weekend. This is uh, the so-called White Ladies Road, um, Black Boy Hill territory. It's not hard to work out what it is. It's something to do with, you know, the, um, you know, the history of the slave trade. You've had this place that has got black people, that's got people from all over the world. And what that's meant is that in the 90s, you have a generation of people who grow up with the idea that complexity, random possibilities, are all things to be welcomed. And all of those things really come together in the music that Ronnie Size makes. You don't get something that sounds like something else, you get something that sounds very unique. Who's playing that? A radio. What you hear is this music of um, real complexity. There are moments of silence. Then there are moments of freneticism. Then there are moments of sheer noise. Then there are moments of beauty and of clarity. All of those things can happen within a single song, within a single track. Because effectively, that's kind of what it's like walking down the street. You can hear a car alarm, you can hear a fire alarm, you can hear a police siren. What you hear when you hear down bass is a crystallization of an urban experience. Yeah, so it's straight to the top. Rock it to the top, top, top. Yeah, just go straight up and go over. And that's where we hit. My part of town. We used to walk up, you know, 
like from Carnival, you you know spend the whole day down there, and you know everything was so loud and loads of things were going on, and then you slowly start walking up the hill, and things would get quieter and quieter, and as you get to the top, you know the only thing you could hear was like the bass. explain to someone what drum and bass is. It does centre a lot around the beat. This beat is um, stretched and put through a sampler and put onto a computer at around about 160 beats per minute. Layered on top of that could be anything. I go straight to my sampler, um, sample records, um, got some stuff here which I've been sampling over the last couple of months. The sampler itself is, is the new electric guitar, you know, it's, it is the kind of modern, current day, progressive instrument. With a sampler, that's a licence. That's, 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 that's loads of 007s out there with license to kill. So basically the object is now is to be able to get these sounds here, you know, to, to, to the conductor, to, um, over to the sequencer. The sequencer is basically driving the sampling technology. You take the beats, you chop them up, you give them the sound you want in the sampler and then the sequencer is the engine that drives them forward. What the technology allows us to do is to be more creative and gives us more freedom. But what's more important than any of the machines is what's in here. Do you know what I mean? If you've got nothing in there, then all the equipment in the world ain't going to do you no good. So now you take the position of conductor to put it in where you feel it should go and at what time. Basically find the break and go for accounting. Oh, that sounds riffing. This is the next chapter right now, we're in it. We're in the next chapter. Page one. This was where hip hop started, you know, in New York, and to go to the place and not just to visit, but to actual to play with our version of our music, man, it's like, yeah, it's like a dream, man. Is this your first time out here? Yeah. What do you think? Love it. Yeah. Love it, love it, love it. I'm moving out here tomorrow. No one wants to go back. <laughs> New York, live show, is very important. I don't really know if the American audience...